Well, the doctor and Mel head over to Ice World to take on uh, Mr. Freeze. <laughs> so, uh, this is a, a, you know, completely shot on set and all that, which, you know, sometimes that's for the better. Uh, but especially in this era where they were just everything was on cheap video, you know, like daytime soap operas and everything. I don't know. They probably should have just shot everything on a soundstage. But anyway, uh, so there's something sinister afoot, of course. Uh, so Mr. Freeze is uh, taking all these uh, what appears to be uh, uh, draftees and uh, freezing them uh, to uh, cause them to lose their memories so that they'll be loyal subjects uh, for uh, his endeavor. Now, meanwhile, uh, they're warned not to travel in forbidden zones of the facility because there's a dragon out there. Um, and so, uh, is there really? Well, of course, uh, there's something. Oh, what could it be? Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the facility appears to be some sort of, like, resort. <laughs> and uh, there's this airhead woman with her little kid in a ridiculous outfit. I really don't know what that was even done for. Uh, you know, it's just for the kid to see the TARDIS arrive and then be there at the end when it leaves. And wow. So anyway, the doctor and male go to this uh, little restaurant. And lo and behold, there's a particular waitress. Oh, boy, I wonder who she could be. Turns out her name's Dorothy, but she doesn't like the name. No, she prefers to be called Ace. I've never understood the affection for Ace. There's certainly uh, quite a following, and people say that's one of their favorite companions. Um, I, I don't know. I just thought it was a kind of a ripoff of what they were doing with Leela, except you know she didn't have the Tarzan outfit, uh, and instead of uh, Janus thorns and a knife, she had a bat and explosives. Uh, she's a bit of a pyromaniac a bit, you know, um, and uh, kind of snotty and all that, um, and insists on calling the doctor professor, which she just suddenly does, you know, and is, oh, I guess he reminded her of her professors before she, uh, apparently, yeah, she got zapped to this planet, so she, and she was kind of excited about it to escape her dull life of being a waitress only to be a waitress on another planet so tee hee anyway the uniforms at the uh the, the, the I guess the villain's army it was, was, was kind of neat um but the deal is uh he's up to no good and Mr. Freeze uh can freeze people and, uh, oh, what's that all about? Well, it's it's very simple. Yes, there is a dragon, but it's actually a, something of a cyborg entity that uh, kind of looks like a cross between the, the xenomorph from the Alien movies and uh, the head almost kind of like uh, those creatures from this island Earth, you know. But, of course, it's all a misunderstanding. He's actually quite nice. But, uh, you know, the doctor figures that out. Uh, but he has uh, laser eyes. You know, like Cyclops, and uh, yeah, he shoots people when they're being naughty. So, um, but uh, the, the show that he's actually a decent guy, he does save the little girl who gets lost. So there you go. But um, he ends up losing his head <laughs> because it turns out um, the, the the title of the show being Dragon Fire. Oh, what's that? Well, it's this element that uh, the evil, uh, you know, Captain Kane or whatever his rank was. I can't remember. Uh, is searching for for 3,000 years. Um, and he just got around to having the sculptor make a sculpture of his old dead girlfriend. Um, and then he kills the sculptor because, I don't know, he said he didn't want anybody to know he had... The, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, some of his minions try to turn on him, but... Um, doesn't work and they never seem to figure out that his touch of death means you die if he touches you yeah 
But anyway, like Mr. Freeze, he has to be in uh, really cold temperatures. So if you turn it down, uh, he starts to get sick. Um, but they try to do do him in that way. But it, again, it doesn't work because he touches them with his cold hands. And they, oh, and, you know, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So um, the uh, element within the head of the dragon uh, is basically the green crystal from Krypton that Superman used to uh, create the forces of solitude and uh, also restore his powers when he gave them up so he could bang Lois. Uh, so it's in there, except, uh, boy, it, they sure went out of the way to make it look rather phallic with uh, even a, a sack for it to rest on. But anyway... He says, oh, give it to me. You know, so he takes it uh, to trade Ace for, uh, you know, the crystal thing. So uh, there you go. They introduce how Ace is just so great because she knows how to do explosives and stuff. So they do that all to the tune of the horrible keyboard music. Uh, she explains all this after she invites Mel to her bedroom, you know, yeah, which is a mess, a pigsty, you know. But anyway, after getting captured, so they do the trade, you know, and all that. And uh, uh, But then, lo and behold, it turns out that the uh, resort is actually an ancient spaceship. Oh, my goodness. Never thought of it. Haven't seen that in Doctor Who, have you? <laughs> uh, so it lifts off, and he's going to return to his home planet because Kane apparently was, a, a, you know, a rotten criminal or whatever, and they put him in exile on Ice World. And uh, basically, the uh, biomechanical whatever creature dragon was his was his guard. Uh, that was the deal. But it's been three thousand years, so who can keep up with all that? And uh, so now he's gonna go get revenge on the people who exiled him, even though well, it's been three thousand years. I mean, of course, he seems to be immortal, so maybe they are too. But then, uh, uh oh, well, the doctor uh, being up on you know local history and whatnot said oh well your own planet's been dead for 2,000 years <laughs> of the 3,000 you've spent on ice world so there's really there's really nothing for you to do this was all a colossal waste of time and he's like what oh so he opens the shade and stares at the sun or perhaps the ark of the covenant because then his face immediately melts you know like the nasties did in Raiders of the Lost Ark so anyway there you go uh, that, that solved that problem. And then, um, well, Mel decides to stay behind because, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention uh, Glitz showed up. Uh, and they blow, uh, the Kane blows up his ship, so he needs a new one. So he just takes Kane's ship. And uh, Mel decides to stay with Glitz. Just because, I don't know. And uh, the doctor, being an idiot, decides to invite Ace to stay with him um, because Mel says, she's got nowhere to go. Well, she could stay on the ship where she's been all this time anyway. But, um, uh, yeah, she'll, she's the new companion. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's it. There you go dragon fire <laughs>